Well, 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 hello everybody and welcome back to my channel where I have been discussing a lot of topics within my book, my recently published book, The Sleeper Agent. If you haven't seen it, it is on Amazon. It was doing very well in the best sellers of that category. It was at number 12. It kind of fluctuates. It was at number 12 yesterday. And so it's doing well. And I think people will see that I've got the story right. I've got the story right. And I think I nailed it. I think the evidence speaks for itself. And if you look at the entire situation, it makes complete sense. And it's all in here. And it's not just about Lyme disease. It's about the entire spectrum of chronic disease, which underlying it is immune tolerance. The phenomenon that Eric Traub spent his life studying. And I have collected all of his published work. I translated his German uh, papers into English. Um, I have also done that with like almost, I actually collected pretty much almost all of Insul Reim's uh, published work, like the, the bioweapons facility that he worked at in East Germany. I got all a lot of his colleagues' work, published work in German, and translate, translated those, um, because Eric Traub was kind of overseeing the whole operation at Insul Reims. And so I spent many years studying his work studying his work, going after paper, and, and I know his work so well, I can tell you what papers he published what year. And he published papers from 1932 all the way to 1980, I think it was 1984 was his last paper or something. He died in 1985. Um, and in this video, I want to talk about the, the weaknesses and vulnerabilities in our biodefense and public health. Now, it is, it is my observation, after doing this book, and there are some other really good books, um, and I'll talk about those in a minute, but in, in, uh, there was a few, there was a video that I did um, a while back called Blackmail and Biological Warfare. And I talked about this illegal, off-record, tripartite agreement between um, Russia, Britain, and the United States, where they said... So what happened was there was a, a defector named Vladimir Poseshnik. He defected the Soviet Union and went, with the help of British intelligence, went to Britain and he told them about the massive biological warfare program that the Soviet Union had. And it was immense. And so, what was unusual is the West didn't expose this defector. When he defected, it wasn't in the media they didn't say anything about it. They kept it secret. And in Ken Alabeck's book, he was another defector. He, and he ran the biological weapons program, um, or at least he was very high up in it. He, um, he's the one who mentioned that tripartite agreement, that illegal off-record agreement that said, that said we won't expose each other's bioweapons violations. Um, and that makes those who did that, those Americans in biodefense who, who engaged in that illegal off-record tripartite agreement are traitors. They are traitors to the country because what they're saying is you can attack us as much as you want and we won't expose it. And I think... There's a deeper problem to this. There's a lot of stupidity, but I think there's also um, 
an immense and overwhelming amount of infiltration and sabotage. And when I say sabotage, I'm also talking about um, the, the, the way they infiltrate into the public health system, get in positions where they can direct policy and start putting policies into, into law that are harmful, intentionally doing that, harmful to the American public. Um, you know, and we have, we have, at, we have the son of MP Chumakov running vaccine safety and review at the FDA. I make no claims about him, but I think someone, you know, his father was Stalin's top bioweaponeer. He experimented with Ebola-like viruses on mentally ill patients. He experimented on the Muslims and Mongolians in the 1930s with this, these big tick plagues and stuff. His son is running vaccine safety at the FDA. I just, me personally, I think that's just too much of a sensitive position to put someone with that kind of background there. And whoever was involved in that off-record illegal agreement, these are traitors and they should be tried for treason. And speaking of treason, there is a really good book, actually two books, that um, are very eye-opening. They're, they're by a man named Dr. R. Swinburne Clymer. Um, he has, I, I've read many of his other books on spirituality. I really like his work. But these two books are, are, have striking parallels to The Sleeper Agent. And they are called, the first one is called The Age of Treason, okay? And the second one is called Your Health and Sanity in the Age of Treason. It's kind of like a companion volume. But he talks about the Soviet infiltration and them having plans to basically poison the American public with chemicals, with all sorts of stuff that they can add into the water and the food, and of course, the shots. Um, so, in light of that information, and you know, it speaks for itself, because all he's really doing is quoting these people, these communists. And it's eye-opening. But I started reading it, and I was like, wow, there's so many parallels to stuff in my book. Uh, and I definitely recommend that book to people. It's called The Age of Treason and Your Health and Sanity in the Age of Treason by R. Swinburne Clymer. So, we ask ourselves, we've got this big mess, you know, and then, you know, you look back a few years back at the situation of 2019, and the public health response to that was a complete disaster, right? And and they they rushed this shot into uh, into like they rushed this shot onto the market, right? And the system that they use to monitor adverse events is completely incompetent. Um, it, it's completely incompetent, and um, it's basically set up to evade accountability. So, biodefense and public health have serious, serious problems. And unless they start taking a look at their own flaws, things are just going to continue to deteriorate. Okay, and I have picked out one, two, three, four, five, five things that are of extreme importance in this problem. Number one, which I already talked about, was this 
massive problem of infiltration and sabotage. Enemies working within the system, they have to be found. They have to be, you know, like weeded out. Um, because it's definitely real. And I just talked about it. And, you know, Alexander Kuzminov, who wrote Biological Espionage, says exactly that. He's like, we're flooding your public health system. We're flooding your biodefense. We're flooding your agricultural divisions with spies and saboteurs. Okay. And it's a vicious element of humanity. So there's a sabotage and infiltration. Okay, that's number one. Number two is this problem of immune tolerance. Because Eric Traub's immune tolerance is of such vast importance. And why? Because it, it basically flips the entire paradigm of Western immunology on its head and in relation to disease, where they say that, that inflammation is the cause of all disease. Absolutely not. There's, there are two spectrums of disease, okay? Here in the middle is good health, right? On this side is disease with heavy inflammation and immune response that is so heavy that you have a very visible disease. You may puff up or, or whatever it is, but it's, it's marked by a heavy immune response and that's called acute disease, okay? Back to health here. Then when you suppress the immune system with things like shots and, and these great imitator antigens that I talk about in my book, it goes to the other side. And this is chronic disease. It's on the polar opposite side of acute disease. And it's marked by immunosuppression, right? And reactivation of latent viruses, which basically destroy the body from head to toe slowly. It raises the cancer rate, right? And it brings on neurological disease due to the central nervous system invasion when the immune system is, is tolerized or suppressed so badly. I think the better word would be immune, immune paralysis. Immune, and they have used that. They've also used like endotoxin tolerance. Um, they've used, let's see, immune paralysis is one. They've used immune tolerance. Uh, endotoxin tolerance. It's marked by immunosuppression. It's on the polar opposite side. And so, you know, it, it's like two pillars of disease. Acute disease and chronic disease. And the public health system and the Western paradigm of immunology completely ignores this side. They only mark disease by, by antibodies and inflammation. So people with these slow chronic diseases go completely undiagnosed because, and Eric Tribe talked about it in my, I talked about it in my book how Eric Tribe was saying that it, the blood work comes back normal, right? And there's no antibodies, yet the virus is basically festering in the subject and destroying its body slowly and shedding this virus without any signs of disease okay so this is something that is i mean if they if they acknowledge that can you imagine how that would affect big pharma when antibodies aren't necessarily an indicator of immunity and that um, you have these diseases that you have no antibodies, right? You, you can shed virus, you, there's no inflammation, but yet you feel awful. You've got chronic headaches, your joints ache and all that stuff, but yet all the blood work comes back normal and they tell you, oh, we can't find anything wrong with you. And they basically send you out the door. And if you keep trying to get treatment saying that you're sick with something, 
They call it somatoform. They say you're imagining your disease and it's bringing on symptoms. <laughs> it's crazy. So that is the second problem. And I would say that is probably of the most immense importance. And I think that's why it was buried. Because in 1960, two guys received the Nobel Prize for Immune Tolerance. They were not nominated together by anyone. They did not work together. And it was, it was given to them about organ transplant recipients because the same thing happens with them. Um, and they completely ignored the infectious etiologies of immune tolerance and, and its relationship to infectious disease because it would flip the entire paradigm of Western immunology on its head and it would show serious, serious flaws in the current approaches to immunology. And that would, that would severely cut into profits. So that's a big problem. And as long as money is more important than the, than the health of the American public, then things will continue to deteriorate. All right, so the third one, prestige and image. That's, and, and it's like, in order to deal with the immune tolerance one, we have three more things that are very relevant to that. And, and so number three is prestige and image. As long as they're more uh, concerned with their image and their prestige and reputation rather than admitting when they're wrong and, and doing what's right for the health of the American public, they turn their backs on the American public and try to prop up their image instead. So that has to be dealt with. And number four, profiteering. Big Pharma and their profiteering. As long as profiteering is more important than the health of the American public, and it's, it's going to continue to deteriorate. And, you know, this is another area that is severely, I would say severely compromised by infiltration. And the same is true for the public health system. And I think, I mean, it was bad in Eric Traub's day in the 50s. And, when a, and what happens when a mess is left and, and, you don't, and you don't take care of it? It's like, what happens if you don't clean your house and you just completely stop doing that? It starts to get really messy. You end up with a much bigger mess and eventually, it's this overwhelming mess that is just an absolute nightmare to take care of. And that's basically where we're at now. Because that mess has been left to fester, and it's only increased. The problem is of such an immense proportion now, and it's not surprising to see who's running vaccine safety at the, at the FDA. If you read my book, you'll understand what I'm trying to say here. And so the last thing, number five, is manipulating data in fraudulent studies. Because this has become a very serious problem in science. You know, and it's kind of like they can manipulate data so in such clever ways i have i have caught them in so many things and it's like something that is you you would have to know a lot about that to spot any of it it's done very smooth criminals basically but these these problems of fraudulent data and manipulating studies is Something that is, I think, rampant in science. And I think it has a lot to do with the profiteering and prestige. And also, 
infiltration and sabotage. So these are all areas that really need to be taken a look that that these people, anybody who cares in government, anybody who actually cares about the health of the American public and the well-being of them has to start looking at their own flaws if they want to solve this problem. And that means facing immune tolerance and what it implies on the, on the larger scale as it relates to immunology and infectious disease. Because it would show serious, serious flaws in immunology. And when they know that those flaws are there and they continue propping that up, that's called fraud. That's called fraud. And when fraud is being used to take care of the American public, that is treason. That is treason. So, immune tolerance basically stands current immunology and disease on its head. And that Nobel Prize in 1960 basically sidelined what Eric Traub's findings had shown, and they made it about organ transplant recipients. Because they didn't want that cutting in to the profit and all of the rest of their system, their political machine. And what we are seeing is the, the autism rate is, is skyrocketing. All these neurological diseases are, are, are just becoming rampant. And this is going to continue. This is going to continue to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And eventually, when... You know, like the autism rate is at like 50%, one in two children. What's going to happen to society? Who's going who's gonna to take care of the elderly? Who's going to do all of those things that normal, functional people do? I mean, you're going to see a complete breakdown of society if we continue on this path. And I have tried ad nauseum to explain to people that these, that these shots are inducing the very same disease as the antigens on Eric Traub's weapons. Okay? Because the antigen is the weapon. Okay? That, and that is why I called it the great imitator antigen. That was the weapon. So... It's it, injecting it into you is probably even worse than being exposed to these biological weapons that Eric Traub made. Worse, especially when, when it's programming your own cells to make that with these newer ones. It's diabolical, and I think if you read The Age of Treason... You will, you will see what I'm saying. And you read my book, it's eye-opening. So that is it. That's all I wanted to say. And, you know, if... I hope those people out there that are in biodefense, that are in public health, that actually care and see this and it makes them think. Because, I mean, things have gotten unbelievably bad. And I have spent, I mean, this was a, this was a, this was a, an area that I never planned to go in. I never, it was never my intention to just go in, go so deep into immunology and write this book about Eric Traub and the, and the history of stealth biological warfare. I was always interested in the subject and I did, I did like reading about it. But I never saw myself going down this path, and it was just something that came up, and I felt driven to do it. And, I mean, I'm, I'm very proud of this book. I put so much work into this book. So much work. 
and I think, obviously, I have a gift. And I'm trying to use that for the betterment of society. So, that is it. And until they clean this thing up, American biodefense and the public health system is going to be a complete and utter failure. Things are going to continue to deteriorate. And, you know, with this, with this blackmail... Where they, where, where these traders have said we'll turn our, we'll turn our heads the other way when, when you violate the bioweapons treaty. Um, we'll turn our heads. We won't say anything. Um, it's like. So you know, I was asked the other day on a podcast the feasibility of releasing a, a virus of lower virulence to combat. A virus of higher virulence and I said absolutely not not a good idea because what that does is it it it, it further acts on chronic disease and and adds to that problem which is already a festering mess and instead of asking ourselves uh, the feasibility of releasing viruses why don't we ask ourselves why aren't why isn't the biodefense calling out bioterrorism when it happens instead of turning their heads the other way like traitors so that's my point there so I'm going to leave it here and with that said everybody take care of yourselves be yourself, build yourself and I will see you on the other side